like what's still out there that we don't fully understand that you wish we did and have a sense of how we could if we could just do this one study. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's probably I mean, a lot, right? There, like there is yeah. I mean I I I think, you know, I've been I'm really like I said, I'm really into the brain. There's been a variety of studies that I I think we need to look at the impact of like lifelong exercise and neurodegenerative disease risk. And, you know, and not not in a way where it's just a questionnaire this one week and then let's just say that's how much you exercise for the last, you know, 10 years. Like, because it's just not very, good. it's not a very good indicator of, okay, whether or not they were actually exercising as much as they did that one week, right? Because that's right. what a lot of observational data looks at. So I would love to see, you know, something that is more like a randomized controlled trial looking at people that are engaging in exercise or not and their their risk of neurodegenerative disease, particularly if they have gene, genes that elevate their risk, like the ApoE4 allele is one that's a big one. Yeah. To what extent does exercise over, override that right. genetic predisposition? If you take somebody who is a lifelong athlete and they're doing it perfectly their entire life and they have the right mix of endurance and strength and high intensity, uh, are, d does that create a situation in which they sidestep a disease that otherwise would have almost been a certainty? And I think it would. For sure. I, I, I do. But, you know, we just don't have that data. 